This is Umar Ahmed for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. Thank you to Dominic Ingle for joining me on this Sunday afternoon. Obviously, just seen a, a mega fight night last night in Las Vegas with Tyson Fury stopped Deontay Wilder in the 11th round. Um, Dom, yeah, your opening thoughts on the fight itself? Yeah, you know, I don't think there was any of it, uh, any doubt that Tyson was going to win the fight. Um, I think a lot of people thought because Deontay had changed his trainer, uh, changed a few, few things in camp, put weight on, that it was going to be a different fight. But, you know, if you look at the fights, uh, the three fights that they had. The first one, you know, it was debatable. It was a draw. Second one, you know, Tyson Fury came and, and finished him. And then the third one, you know, he flattened him again. And I think once Tyson Fury's got your number, he's always got your number. I don't think you're ever going to beat him unless he wants you to beat him, unless he takes his eye off the ball, uh, gets a little bit complacent. And maybe the first pull out when he said he got COVID, maybe he knew he wasn't in the right place and decided to give himself some more time. Um, you know, so knowing full well that Dante Wilder had put more into the camp. Yeah, I mean, the, we had a, a scary moment for Tyson in that fourth round where he got dropped twice. And after the, the fight, Tyson, as always, refers to your, your dad's comments, God, God rest his soul, um, the late Brendan Engel, who al always said that the only way to beat Tyson Fury is to nail him to the canvas. And as we saw last night, again, Dom, very true. He's got, he's, he has got this ability, hasn't he, that, you know, some heavyweights, well, a lot of heavyweights, once they get hit, they stiffen up and they're almost out on their feet. Um, or, you know, they're knocked out before they hit the floor, a bit like, you know, uh, uh, you know, fighters when they're getting hit on the chin and they're going down, they're staying down. But Tyson's just got, you know, Dillian White, when he got hit with Povetkin, he was out before he hit the floor. Some guys just get hit on the ropes, stiff, and they, they, they're out on the feet. But Tyson goes down, but he's got this remarkable ability to keep climbing up. And it does make you wonder how many times you would have to go down that he could not go down again. But I think it kind of wakes him up. And he knows how to survive. You see him grabbing around the waist of uh, Wilder as he's falling. Uh, you know, he pulls himself back up again. But he's just got this ability. You know, his powers of recovery are amazing. And he's got a, a good chin. And, you know, he's been, he's been down by... He's been dropped by lesser opponents, I think, early in his career. Uh, you know, by a cruiserweight... I think it was Cunningham who, who drops him. Yeah. But he always finds a way to come back. He's just got that fighting ability, hasn't he? You know, he's just comfortable having a fight. He's got, got no... It doesn't seem like he's got any qualms or any worries about anything. It's just a process he knows he's got to go through. Uh, and it's a fight and he, he's going to finish on his feet. Dom, it seemed like at the end of the fight, in terms of through round seven, eight and onwards, that there were points perhaps some trainers might have thrown the towel in, especially the punishment that, that Wilder suffered in the second Fury fight and then also last night. Watching that fight last night, was there any point where you thought if you were Malik Scott, you would have chucked in the towel for Wilder? Well, that's the problem, isn't it? Because you know what happens when you chuck the towel in with Deontay Wilder, you get the sack. And, you know, I don't know how, how the contracts work in America, but unless you've got it nailed on with a solicitor, let's just say that he throws a towel in and Deontay Wilder says, I weren't happy about that and don't end up paying him. You know what I mean? So you've got to be careful, aren't you? And we know his, we know his thoughts, don't say, well, he wants to go out on his shield. He's made that very clear. So as a trainer, as his trainer, you will have that conversation before you go in. If he says to you as the fighter, you know, I'm going out on my shield. Well, you've got to then make that decision yourself. Am I going to go in the corner with this kid or I'm going to carry out his instructions? Because, you know, it's happened before and uh, Mark Breland got the sack. You know, he probably saved him in that fight uh, for this third fight. And he went further in this fight than the second one, I think. So, you know, it's a decision between... Americans have got a different attitude, I think, fighters, different uh, mindset, and the trainers. And even the referees, they do let the fights go on sometimes to the point of, you know, the point of no return. Whereas England, they're a bit more cautious. They'll, mm. they'll stop the fight before the fighters, you know, getting too much damage. But in America, they love that where, the, you know, the fight can be absolutely wobbling around. The referee goes box on and it's bang. And they're asleep, you know, for 20 minutes or so. So, you know, I wouldn't like to be in Malik Scott's position. Um, they must have had that conversation. And, you know, he walked out of the ring, which is a good thing, uh, which is testament to his training. And it's probably a good job that Malik Scott didn't, you know, pull him out of the fight. Because you never know, one, one punch can turn it around with Dante Wilder. It can. Uh, so I think it was, you know, the right, probably the right decision for, for their team. Does this chapter, the end of this trilogy with Wilder and obviously the win that Tyson had in Germany against Klitschko, 
cement his position as the best of our of our generation? I think you've got to, you've got to say that, haven't you? I mean, if you look at the time when he spent two years out of the ring, it kind of gave everybody else a chance to get in front of him. Yeah. You know what I mean? And and uh, get the position in, and then with all the belts, especially Anthony Joshua, got into a position where they could fend fend every you know fend him off uh, with mandatories and other fights. But eventually, that he closed that gap, and he closed the gap and got in front of everybody now. And I don't think there's anybody to touch him. You know, I know Dillian White is supposed to be in, in line for him next. But for me, um, I think he's beat everybody he needs to be. Yeah, you know, I don't think he'd have a problem beating Anthony Joshua. I like Dillian White. I think Dillian White will give him an half decent fight. But Tyson Fury is just too big. He knows too many tricks. You know, when he knocked when he knocked Wilder out, he got him hooked with his left arm, hit him with an uppercut, brought his head up, hit him with a left hook. And then finished him with her eye, you know, just used his body weight and kept on his chest. And I think with Deontay Wilder coming in heavy, it was a big mistake. You know, he was, he was already a strong, heavy hitting puncher without body weight. So he doesn't need the extra, what does he need the extra weight for? Because he's never going to out maul or wrestle Tyson Fury because he hasn't got that ability to do it, he hasn't got the know how. And, you know, I think the only chance that Deontay Wilder would ever have against Tyson Fury is to keep it long, keep the jabs long keep the distance, keep on his feet and keep moving and try and outbox him. That's the only way you're going to beat Tyson Fury. You're going to beat him to be able to do that. Mm. But Tyson's so good at closing the distance, you know, making the opponent's shots ineffective, tapping the shots down, getting on on the chest, you know, mauling him, laying on him, tiring him out. You know, people were saying he were exhausted after four or five rounds. Well, I'm not surprised. Imagine trying to shift a fella around two or three stone heavier than you. And you've got body weight on yourself. So really, you can't you can't be doing that, you know. Look what Usyk did with jo- Joshua was light. He just kept out of the way, just kept his kept his movement, just kept pick patting him with shots, and never never really expended energy. And that's what you really got to do with Tyson Fury as a bigger guy. But he's such a fit, big, you know, such so fit for a big guy. You know, you've got to be super fit, and you've got to have the mental ability to keep it up for twelve rounds. Mm, definitely. All right, Dom, I appreciate your thoughts on last night's events. I will see you on November 6th fight week when Willie Hutchinson's back in action in Birmingham. Yeah. And uh, we'll have a catch-up about everything going on with your fighters then in person. But, yeah, appreciate your time, and uh, I'll see no you problem, on mate. fight week. Thank you, Dom. See you later, pal.